accounts receivable. We spoke about that we have two accounts now. We have accounts receivable and the allowance for doubtful accounts or the allowance for uncollectible accounts or the allowance for bad debts. Let's take a look at that adjusting entry at the end of the period. In other words, when we look at our accounts receivable and our sales that we made during the period and try to estimate who's going to do us wrong. And you'll remember that that entry is always going to be debit, bad debt expense, or doubtful accounts expense, or uncollectible accounts expense, and credit the allowance for doubtful accounts, uncollectible accounts, or bad debts. So here's the number that we've got to find. But this is always the adjusting entry. So it's always debit the expense, credit the allowance. So let's take a look at a problem, specifically problem 9-6 in the text, and uh, follow what happened during the period and then making that adjusting entry. So it says in P6 we have Hernandez Company. It has accounts receivable at the beginning of the period that has a balance of $320,000. So we have a beginning balance of three twenty dollars in accounts receivable. And it has a credit balance right now in the allowance for uncollectible accounts of $16,700. Okay, so those are our beginning balances. It also says that uh, during the year the following things happen. So sales on account were $1,052,000. Well, we know if sales are on account, we're going to debit accounts receivable $1,052,000. And we're going to credit sales, $1,052,000, because those are on account, right? That's A. Then it says in B, sales returns and allowances. In other words, the customers who brought it back were a total of $53,400. Well, if the customer brings it back, that means I have to debit sales for $53,400, because they brought it back, and credit accounts receivable because they returned it. In Part C, it says we collected from customers $993,000. Well, if we collected it, it means we debit cash. That's a good thing. And we credit accounts receivable $993,000 because the customer paid. In D, it says worthless accounts written off were $19,800. So we specifically know who done us wrong, and we write them off. Well, how we write them off is we debit allowance for doubtful accounts, uncollectible accounts, or bad debts, and we credit accounts receivable, 19800 So that's a write-off. Debit the allowance, credit the accounts receivable. We are now at year end, and it says for our adjusting entry, the company's past history indicates that 2.5% of net sales will not be collected. So that's our estimate. 2.5% of net sales. So we need to figure out what net sales are. Well, it's sales less the returns. So if I take our sales less our returns, the balance is 998. 600. So if I take 2.5% of 998, 600, I find that my bad debts, or my estimate, is going to be, um, is it 24,965? 24,965 is 2.5%. So what I'm going to do then is make that entry, debit bad debt expense for $24,965, and I'm going to credit the allowance for doubtful accounts for $24,965, and that will give me the ending balance in my allowance account. So, um, let's see, that would be then $21,865, $21,865. So that's my EB, or my ending balance. The alternative to this is to use what we call the aging method. And the aging method of accounts receivable says instead of taking a percentage of sales, 
we look at our accounts receivable and we figure out what the balance should be in the allowance account. So in that allowance account, remember we started with $16,700. We wrote off specifically $19,800. So the balance before our adjustment was $3,100. Now, in part two of this problem, it says instead of using the percentage of sales method, use the aging. And the aging says we want an ending balance of $24,000. Well, if that's the case, and right now we have a balance before adjustment of $3,100, the adjusting entry is going to be for $27,100. In other words, we'll debit bad debt expense, $27,100, credit the allowance for doubtful accounts for $27,100, and will we get this desired ending balance? You bet. So, here's your choice. We're getting into accounting. You can either use percentage of sales method to estimate bad debts and make the adjusting entry, or you can use the aging method, can't you? Not both, one or the other.